Hey guys, today I'm going to show y'all some tips on um, getting these cars to idle without an idle air control motor. Uh, a lot of people uh, rely upon an idle air control motor to do everything for them when it comes to idle. And if you have one that's good, uh, you should, you know, kind of know what you need to do by opening the throttle blade and whatnot. But um, today I'm just going to go over how I get a lot of the cars that I work with to idle without an idle air control motor. The majority of the stuff that I work on doesn't have an idle air control motor. They're uh, typically big nitrous engines or, um, you know, turbo alcohol deals, and they just don't have idle air control motors. So uh, I put a little, a couple of things into the uh, the tune-up to, to help them idle at the desired RPM. So the first thing I want to show you is the idle ICF. So if you don't have an idle air control motor, none of this matters, okay? But this right here, idle spark helps quite a bit, right? So if we enable idle spark, what it's going to do is it's going to go off of this target idle speed table, and it's going to add and remove timing um, up to eight degrees in order to try to get our target idle speed. So uh, let's put our target idle speed at 1100. So there we go. So if our total uh, idle speed is 1100 RPM, what this is gonna do is swing timing eight degrees at idle. So if we go over to our Spark ICF, uh, you can see that our, our timing, I just put a generic 30 degrees in here in this table, uh, just for easy numbers, easy math, right? So idle Spark, what it's going to do is let it swing up to 38 degrees or down to 22 degrees to try to keep your target uh, idle speed of 1100 RPM. Sometimes this works good, sometimes this doesn't work that good. Uh, so there's two other options that I typically use uh, instead of just using idle spark, and that's in advanced tables. So if we open up the advanced ICF, if you don't have the advanced ICF, you need to go to toolbox, add individual config, double click advanced, and then just click default and hit open. Uh, but we already have the advanced ICF open in here. So first thing I'm going to do is show you the 1D table that I use. And again, like all these videos that I make for you guys, um, none of these values that I put in here, like this timing, this th this was here for simple math. Like I'm, I'm not telling you to put 30 degrees of timing in your engine. Nothing that I, that I, none of the numbers that you see in any of my videos are, hey, you have to do this. No, stop it. It, you know, I'm using this so that it's it's easy to do so, you know, a little bit of basic math. So you kind of have an idea of what your timing is going to be. So um, don't don't think that I'm telling you to put 30 degrees of timing in it, you know, in the in the uh, in the entire map here. Right. So anyway, hell, we can make this here. We'll, we'll, here just just for reference. There you go. You got zero degrees above two above 14 or, you know, 2000 RPM There's zero degrees of timing. So there you go. Uh, if you go ahead and take those numbers and you shove them into your, uh, into your ECU, um, you know why it doesn't run past 2,000 RPM. So anyway, we're working with 30 degrees here. Uh, the, 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 the number one thing about idle, right, is, is also it's a fuel map has got to be decent, okay? So if your fuel map sucks or it's all over the place, it's, uh, it's not going to – idle well period right so if we have huge numbers uh huge variations of numbers like we got 21 pounds per hour here if we had uh 80 pounds per hour there right and then we had 15 pounds per hour here and we had um six here what do you think is going to happen it's going to idle like garbage okay so um this is actually a this is a, a global file from a 707 that i tune a 707 cubic inch engine um, that I work with, but um, this is just a, a, don't take these numbers again. There, we'll do this. There you go. Um, so anyway, this is a, this is a 707 that I, um, I got fired up and uh, idling and whatnot. And you can tell that the, the base fuel table is pretty linear. It's pretty smooth. There's nothing, you know, erratic really jumping out at you. So the, the number one thing is you want to make sure that your fuel table doesn't suck to begin with. Um, but then after that, what we need to look at is timing. 
So we do it through advanced tables. So we open up our advanced ICF 1D table. So this is the first way of doing things, right? So this is called idle time. I just name it idle timing, right? The table type is a timing offset. And then our X axis is RPM, okay? So I zeroed it out intentionally so, you know, I can walk you through this. So if our target idle is 1100 RPM, we know that we want no change in timing, right? If it's idling at 1100, we want it at zero degrees timing. If it idles at 1500, we need to remove some timing out of it. So let's just go ahead and what we can do is just knock five degrees out of it there, right, at 1500. And then we can come up here to 1100. We can left click and hold, drag over here, and then right click and hit fill row values. So what that's going to do is if the, if the engine tries to idle up past 1100 RPM, it's going to start pulling timing out. Now I'm going to tell you right now that this is not aggressive enough to make a difference. Um, but it's this is strictly for reference, right? And now if this thing's idling at 800 RPM, maybe we want to put five degrees of timing in it. So we can left click hold, drag over to that five, fill row values. So this is something you'll play with a little bit. Um, and you'll see that if you knock four degrees out of it at 1173 RPM, you'll wind up having an engine that surges quite a bit, okay? It's gonna, you'll wind up working yourself in circles. You don't wanna make huge swings, but swings nonetheless will help with keeping it at a steady 1100 RPM idle. Uh, so even when you, so you know, think about this, if it's sitting there idling at 1100 RPM, you click it in gear and it tries to drop down to 950, it's gonna add uh, 2.9 degrees of timing and it's gonna continue to, you know, try to get it back to that zero number, right? So it's always going to try to get it back to that zero at 1100. So it's probably going to sit here and bounce doing this, right? So that's a simple 1D table for um, for for idle. And then we have an, a 2D table that I do. Uh, this is typically what I do with this 2D table I'm going to show you is, is pretty typical with a turbo alcohol that doesn't have a radiator. Um, this, again, is idle timing CTS, right? So this is coolant temp sensor. This is a timing offset. The x-axis is RPM. The y-axis is coolant temp sensor. Well, I just got done saying there's no there's no radiator. There's no coolant temp in this thing. But yeah, we shove the coolant temp sensor in the oil pan, okay? So uh, if our target, the way this table's built, right, the way I just slapped this together, and, again, these numbers are for reference only. They're not, you know, take them as the gospel, but the target here, right? We've got zero change here. So the target is 125 degrees oil temp at 1127 RPM, right? So we're doing the same thing as what we did with our 1D table, but it's a little bit more involved because now what we're doing is once we get it up to temp to that 126 degrees of the turbo alcohol combo, you can cool the engine back down with more fuel, right? So if it starts to idle up to 1500 degrees, we're knocking eight degrees out of it. If it's at two, if, if it's reading 200 degree oil temp, we want to knock timing out of it, right? And the activation for both of these tables is TPS is below 3%. So you can use either or of these tables uh, with pretty good success. Uh, this one, this particular one I use a lot on, on turbo alcohol stuff. Um, it also, it helps quite a bit with keeping them running when they're very, very cold. Um, if they try to drop an RPM, start stuffing timing back in it. Very similar to the way uh, the idle ICF, uh, idle spark works, but it gets lazier with timing stuff in back of the engine as it warms up. So the reason why this works, you know, a little bit better than just using your, um, your uh, 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 idle spark Idle Spark works very good. Click the box, it works, right? It'll it'll make swings of eight degrees. But um, this seems to keep them leveled off quite a bit. And again, we're making no change at 1127 RPM because that's our target, right? So this is just a reference. These, these values in this table, they're strictly for reference. But hopefully you can understand what's going on here, right? So if you're at 1500 RPM, it's too high if your target's 11. So we're going to knock some timing out of it until it brings it back down. If you find that, if you find that no matter what, what you do, no matter what you do with this table, 
it's always seeming to uh, to want to run around 1300 RPM. Well, back a little bit of throttle blade out of it. If you back a little throttle blade out of it, uh, you'll you'll see that this is uh, you know functioning correctly. If you find that the thing just coughs and the only way it starts is if you give it a little bit of throttle, there's a good chance that you don't have enough throttle blade in it. And that's something that I see a lot on the uh, on the groups and the forums and whatnot and the questions of, hey, it starts and it idles for three seconds and then shuts off. You, you may mechanically have to actually um, get a, a, an Allen wrench and adjust your, uh, your throttle blade. Um, as crazy as that sounds, you may have to actually do it. Um, it's it's a bummer, but you'd have to be somewhat mechanically inclined also to make uh, fuel injection work. So give it a little bit of throttle blade if it's just always sitting down here no matter what you do, right? If no matter what you do with these tables or swinging timing, um, it's always sitting down here, you don't have enough throttle blade in it. And uh, if it's, you know, again, if it's no matter what you do with timing, it's always sitting up here at 1500 RPM, um you got to knock a little bit of throttle blade out of it so this is to take a the, the 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 concept behind both of these tables is to take a car that mechanically is sound and uh the thought process is that it was you know it should idle um but maybe it's high or it's low uh or maybe it idles perfect when it's in gear but when you when you pull or when it's uh not in gear but when you pull it in gear it tries to die down this will help that situation so this will help that situation with temperature as well. This isn't strictly for just turbo alcohol. No, you know, using this for oil temp, you can absolutely use this for coolant temp as well. Uh, and then the, the the last thing that, you know, some of you guys, uh, I'm sure, I'd, I'd hope you know, but you can go into your Spark ICF and you can go to modifiers and you can put a couple of degrees in it as it's warming up and then pull it out once it warms up. Most people just use this as a, uh, you know, they knock timing out of it when it gets way too hot. Right. So, but you can do it the other way too. You can jam a little bit of timing in it when it's warming up. So, and if you're starting up your hot rod in minus 40 degrees, um, that just sucks. You should probably move 40 degrees below zero is terrible. So, uh, you know, get somewhere where you're like the thirties, you know, the lowest. So anyway, hopefully this, uh, this video helps some of y'all and, uh, hopefully I got the audio fixed. Uh, my last batch of videos, everybody complained about audio. If my audio isn't fixed, I'm not going to remake this video. Uh, that's just all there is to it. So hopefully you heard me. And if you don't hear me, and if you didn't hear me the whole video, you probably can't hear me right now when I tell you to just put some headphones on. So anyway, see you.